It's a bit hyperbolic to say the markets are falling off a cliff at this hour. Um, you could argue they're, they're clinging to a tiny little rock at the moment. Dow is still down 450, the S&P down 47, the Nasdaq lower by 114. But today, the CME group has certainly benefited from this fear factor. The stock of the world's largest risk tools marketplace, derivatives, options, and futures, is up 25% over just the past six months. The CME stock has done beautifully as investors have raced to safe havens, particularly in the past third quarter here. The CME group saw record trading, well, in a lot of places, but look at Gold Ultra 10 year gold futures record, average daily volume, Ultra 10 year treasury note futures, and crude oil futures, specifically on September 16th. We'll get to that in a minute. In a Fox Business exclusive, the man who leads the company handling those massive trading moves is CME chairman and CEO Terry Duffy here in a Fox Business exclusive, Terry, on a very busy day. It's got to be crazy on the floor of the CME, right? Well, it's crazy all over the world, Liz, and thank you very much for having me. But yes, the markets have been you know, really rocking and rolling lately. And uh, what I, ha I have to laugh a little bit about, you don't want to laugh in a down market, obviously, but yeah. I was saying to one of my colleagues on the way over to the studio today, I said, you know, everybody on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange had hats on Dow 20,000, Dow 25,000, just about 12 to 14 months ago. And now we're all boo-hooing because it's at 26,000. <laughs> So, yeah, it, you know, exactly. I think we have to take this all into all into perspective. You know, markets always go down faster than they go up and um, not a big surprise. OK, well, let, let me talk about oil here because it's on the screen. Oil is down one and three quarter percent yeah. in the aftermarket. You had record energy futures and options contracts in the most recent right. quarter, specifically on September 16th. That, of course, folks, was the day after the yeah. uh, suicide drone attack by ostensibly, uh, you know, allegedly the Iranians on Saudi Arabian oil fields. Terry, you guys had 6.4 million energy futures and options contracts on that day alone. It's amazing, Liz. I think, you know, you got to realize that I know we have record supplies. You were talking about it earlier about oil, but yes. until we figure out a way to get off all these fossil fuels, which will take quite some time, this is still a very important product in all of our lives. And when you have an attack like this, I get a little concerned because the market spiked upwards to 61, yeah. but it seemed like the market really dusted it off. You know, when you look at where that drone attack happened, you know, you in that general 150 mile radius, there's about 50 percent of the world's reserves are in that area. So I think it's a little bit more concerning. So that bothers me a little bit. Um, yeah. And I think people are getting pretty dismissive of gold. I know there's record supplies, but we still do need it. Well, gold, I have to say, that was huge. We had the record gold futures. And we also saw you guys have record quarterly gold futures, average daily volume jumping 51%. Now, explain to our viewers what yep. people can do with a gold contract that, that would be so attractive at a time like this. I think this is the first time, Liz, I've seen this in a lot of years, where gold was, goes on the front page and it goes off the next day. That has not been the case here the last several months. Gold is actually getting paired up with other trades, whether they're you know, trading cryptos against gold, whether they're trading equities against gold. You know, with the interest rates being down as low as they're at, I think people are looking for places to put money where they feel it's relatively safe. And if it is a negative rate environment, it doesn't cost them. And they can still catch the appreciation of the upside of the market. So this uh, has been a very active asset class for us in the precious metals, gold and silver, and the options on both of those. So to me, it's a very exciting time for the gold market. And I don't think it's going away soon. I'm not saying the price is going up or down, but I think people are really paying closer attention to the gold contracts. And, and silver. Silver saw record silver. options action up 109% for the, uh, the quarter. Right. I mean, it's just amazing for average daily volume. I want to flip over to Fed Funds futures and ultra treasury 10-year note futures. We have that up 65%. You know, that's a flight to quality as well. But explain to people who might not be versed in options and futures trading on a day like this, when there's a lot of fear, how that would have managed their risk, Terry. Well, Liz, I think a lot of people look at those products and, and they get concerned because there's a lot of rhetoric that the president may put pressure on the Federal Reserve chairman to uh, once again cut rates. I think you referenced earlier the, the probability of a rate cut, according to the Fed Fund futures market, 
went up exponentially over the last couple of days, a couple of trading sessions. So th these are products that people are trying to manage their risk. I mean, interest rates, even though they're at record lows, the exposure of interest rates is extremely important because credit cards aren't at zero. They're still very high. Auto loans aren't at zero. Mortgages aren't at zero. So there's a lot of interest rate exposure out there. Yeah. And when, so the Fed fund futures contract, you know, they're trying to decide what they think the Fed lending rate will be, and which is uh, basically affecting all the other products I just referenced. Terry, I'm looking at volatility right now. We're at, uh, you know, the VIX, yeah. which is the fear index for people who don't know. This is a, it stands at yep. 20 at the moment. It's not, I mean, right. it's, it's, I guess, recent history, a decent high here, but uh, we're up 8% right. today. What have your VIX uh, right. futures trading and options have been like? Well, we don't trade the VIX product, as you know. Uh, that traded at the Chicago Board Options Exchange. We trade all of our products, though, are essentially tied to volatility as well. It's just the underlying product. So we're not trading just a pure volatility, but when you look at livestock or you look at grains, you look at the metals that we talked about, we trade every major asset class uh, that's listed out there today, Liz, and they're all affected by volatility. So I think that's where people look at the VIX index today and they say, okay, that's measuring what people talk about is equity volatility. But when you look at the volatility that goes on in all these cl other asset classes, we talked about oil, we talked about gold, we can talk about interest rates. Those are all products that we trade that are affected by what's going on geopolitically, fundamentally, and everything else that happens on a daily basis in the world. I'll tell you what's happening on a daily basis. The Chicago Blackhawks, your team, got killed by the Red Wings <laughs> in the preseason. I mean, what is going on, Terry? Bruins uh, beat I don't them? Know. I think, are they, are they, are they in Finland now? Or I don't even know where they're at right now, but I know they're, they're, they're hiding somewhere, uh, getting ready to play before the season starts. So hopefully the preseason jitters will be over and they'll have a decent season along with your L.A. Kings, your uh, New York Rangers, and every other hometown that you're from, Lizzie, that you're, you're a big fan of. Yeah, my, my L.A. Kings. And, and by the way, you got to stay tuned tomorrow because tonight the NHL official season begins, right? Tomorrow right, we've absolutely. got... Gary Bettman, the commissioner of the National Hockey League, and they're going so big on betting now as well. That's a big thing for them. So yeah. you got you got to stay tuned for Tell that. Hello. I'll be sure to, to rip. Oh, wait, one one quick question. The repo yes. situation, you know, that became a big yeah. issue about two weeks ago where that overnight yes, uh, that overnight interest rate started to spike. And the, the New York Federal it Reserve did. started pouring $75 billion a day at it. Your repo average daily notional volume increased 28%. Wor right. Are you worried so about this repo that, situation? Well, I mean, you're always worried about situations like that. And I think the, the New York Fed has got this be under better control. I think everybody got caught a little asleep at the switch. Everybody needed cash. There was not enough cash available on the repo market. Even so for CME, we have excess cash. We were able to lend out cash at a higher rate, not quite to the 8% that some did, but we were able to lend it out on the overnight basis. So yes, uh, that, that's a situation that I think a lot of people got concerned with why that happened, and, but I think the, the Fed and the New York Fed have got that ironed out, hopefully. Okay, well, hopefully and iron back are two different things. We'll, we'll see. Hope springs eternal. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Right? Terry, thank you. Absolutely.